that I just bought. It's a low angle jack plane made by Veritas. And I really couldn't be any more excited about this plane. This is my first good plane that I've ever bought. And I picked it up with two blades. This one here is a 38 degree bevel and that's good for like smoothing and things like that. Look how thick that blade is. It's like nearly a quarter of an inch thick. And it also got the 25 degree blade and that's what's in there. And that's great for end grain work. And you know what you need for end grain work is a shooting board. So that's what I'm gonna do in this video. Okay, so we got the main platform all constructed here and I did take the time to glue the hook on the back too. So now let me try to explain to you what I have in mind for the fence setup. So I milled a piece of walnut for my fence and actually I'll talk about this real quick too. This is gonna fit inside a groove right here and then there's gonna be another back piece glued onto the back. And I'm gonna keep this really nice and tight because I made sure that I had a perfectly square edge. It's actually the factory edge of the plywood. And that's what's gonna keep this fence really square to this edge. Now, one thing you gotta deal with when using a hard piece of hardwood in a groove like that is wood movement. So I was very careful with my selection. I made sure that my grain is very straight. And I'm gonna orient, orient. And I'm also gonna make sure that I put my piece of hardwood in the groove like this because Majority of my growth is gonna be this way. There's hardly gonna be any growth this way. So I'm hoping that will be enough to make sure that it doesn't get too tight or too loose in there. And what you'd really wanna avoid when picking out a piece of hardwood is the grain running almost at like a 45 because this thing is probably gonna shrink at almost like a diamond shape. So you're gonna lose your square edge and it probably won't fit in a groove anymore. So try to get a piece of hardwood as straight as possible set it up in this direction and you should be all right. That's what I'm hoping anyways. Now, the reason why I wanted to do it this way is because one of the main purposes of this fence other than keeping the stock square is a zero clearance so that when you're using your shooting board and you're running it across your piece, you don't get tear out on the backside of your work piece. Well, after time, you keep chewing away at this fence and then all of a sudden you've lost your zero clearance. I'm going to have two bolts in here that I can loosen up and advance this forward as it wears. So that's the idea. That's what I'll go ahead and do now. So I just added a few T-nuts to the platform of the shooting board and then I also slotted the holes of my fence. Now the other thing I had to do is put a small rabbit here at one end and that's because you have to allow that room for the little space underneath the blade here of your, of your plane. So now it's just a matter of fitting it in the slot and bolting it up. Now to set it up for the first pass, you're just gonna advance it just past your edge, just the tiniest bit. And then that way there you can trim it flush with the plane itself. 
All right. Actually, another good idea is to clamp a backing piece on here so that you don't tear out the back of your fence itself. All right, so with the fence all set, I can give it a little test shot. I got a little piece of walnut here, and it's just a matter of feeding the workpiece into the plane with your thumb with just a little bit of pressure, but most of your pressure wants to hold it tight against the fence. And what you're looking for is, of course, that it's square across here because that tells you that your fence is square, but you also want to check to make sure that it's fence or square in this direction. And that just tells you that your blade is set up properly in your plane. If it's off a little bit, you just got to adjust the blade a little bit. All right, so that's it for the 90 degree fence. Now I want to make a fence for 45 to trim your miters. <laughs> So the idea behind the fence for the miter is pretty simple. I just cut a piece of the plywood on the chop saw. That gave me the rough 45 and I did the same thing with the fence. And then what I could do is put that rabbit right on top of the fence and dial that right in with my combination square until I got a perfect 45 and then put some weights on it and waited for the glue to set. So that worked out quite well. To use it, it's kind of got the same premise as this fence where you can kind of Move it in a little bit further as you wear out the end of that fence to keep that zero clearance. So it seems to work great. All right, so I think that's it for my shooting board. I hope you guys like this video. And of course, if it's your first time here, please hit that subscribe button. I'm Ryan Nodwell, thanks for watching.